What's up, what's up, what's up, your boy DMO Don Luto. We are back with another video today. We are watching Shiny V2. MTV Cribs was extremely fake. Here's the evidence. All right. We all know it was fake, kind of fake. I mean, we all knew it was fake for sure. So, I mean, there's evidence to, ba <coughs> to back it up. Uh, it's, it's, it was all made for TV entertainment, of course. Of course. I heard a bunch of stories. Niggas were borrowing other people's houses. Or they just buy a, or they just rent a house for a day and they just put a bunch of shit in there. I don't know. But anyway, uh, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, trying to get to 1500 by the end of the year. Let's go. 50 cents Ferraris, they were rented. Robbie Williams' castle home, it belonged to someone else. MTV Cribs wasn't exactly legit. And we said that that was my house. Oh, that wasn't your house? No, it's all lies. And nothing shows this better than the episode with Ja Rule. He Damn. flexed his five bedroom mansion on Star Island in Miami, where he talked about living beside other famous celebrities. The house was so familiar that Ja Rule named each area, calling his courtyard the open paradise which was patrolled by his guard dog, Cookie. It was shown in the intro that the property was a rental, but this was assumed to be on a long-term basis, given he knew almost everything about the mansion. However, as it turns out, Ja Rule's house on Cribs was actually a four-day rental, which was exposed in the most embarrassing way, by lawsuit. Ja Rule paid $46,000 for the four-day lease, promising the mansion's owner it'd be used as a private home for eight adults with no video shoots and no loud parties. Well, Ja Rule broke all three conditions, shooting his MTV episode whilst having a party with over 600 people. In the process, holes were punched in the walls, furniture and doors were damaged, the driveway yeah. somehow cracked, while condoms and syringes were left throughout the house. Syringes. As a result, Ja Rule and MTV were sued for a million dollars, but at least it looked like a house that Ja Rule would live in, as the Ying Yang twins ja group was had laughably money out of character. The Atlanta gangster rapping duo opened the door revealing the most suburban house filled with fish tanks, sailing boats, and sea-related artwork. We waving. We waving like the sea. We decorated this ourselves now. That mansion was definitely decorated by some old white people, not the Ying Yang twins. This is clearly just a random old white guy's house that likes to fish and likes boats. That even argue over where they bought appliances and had to improvise names for each of the fish. You can tell the Ying Yang twins have never That's been funny. in that house. It seemed they at it's least owned the vehicles at the end, as the cars displayed by Bow Wow were rented for the show. He was just 18 years old during his first Cribs appearance, but despite having starred in some high profile movies, no, it seemed money. unrealistic that he could afford a six bedroom mansion and a fleet of luxury cars. With his name airbrushed above his bed, it seemed as though Bow Wow at least owned the house, although the luxury vehicles were a little more suspicious. Suspicious, because two years later he'd go on the show again, during which a viewer made an observation. We had MTV Cribs running in the background and watched 21 year old Bow Wow show off his bachelor pad in Miami along with his pimped out Bentley, Lamborghini, and Cadillac Escalade. But then we Not noticed the, the word prestige at the bottom of all three cars and decided to Google Prestige Rental Cars Miami, and what do you know, there it was. Prestige was the name of the company that Bow Wow rented the cars from, which was like encouraged by the show as Birdman also used the service during his appearance. Regardless, people clowned on Bow Wow Why stating, ha ha ha, I wonder if he rented the condo too, which- Why they, why they even do this so they can, like why, why would this a show for celebrity stunt on this? I don't, <laughs> this is crazy, cause like, it was cool back in the day, but like this show wouldn't work today. I don't think niggas really care. Niggas think, cause like, Today, uh, today, today's society, I think people are more, they're not in awe of, like, celebrities like that as much anymore, right? So, like, so they saw a house with a nigga with a bunch of car, I'm like, nigga, why would you waste all this money? <laughs> I feel like... Well, only kids will find this cool. by looking at his life was also highly likely. For example, he'd post his Ferrari to his Instagram, writing, take the drop top to the night spot. Keep the California in California. We went hard tonight, Grammy weekend, which was then reposted by a car rental company who accidentally exposed our good friend Bow Wow pulling up to the Grammys with our Ferrari California. One year later, it was exposed for flexing a rented Hollywood mansion, but the worst example was in 2017 
17. We need to post yeah. this to his Instagram. All right, we talk about MTV crib. We get off the All right, we ain't about to do this to Bow Wow right Yet now, the bro. very same day, this Bow Snapchat Bow went Bow viral. My favorite rapper, bro. So this guy, Lil Bow Wow, is on my flight to NY. But on Instagram, he posted a picture of a private jet caption right. traveling to NY today. Shaking you know my head. You know Turns out Bow Wow's picture of his private jet had been taken from a limo company's website, prompting people to dig even deeper, discovering he'd done this on more than one occasion. It seems his MTV Cribs episode led to years and years of faking luxury, but as mentioned in Bow Wow's expose, 50 Cent had done a similar thing. 50 Cent's episode was the definition of excess. He showed his 19 bedroom, 35 bathroom mansion, which included a squash court, movie theater, recording studio, and its very own nightclub. Equally impressive was his car collection, which included four different rare collectible Ferraris, leading him to state, I know you didn't see these before when you was watching Cribs because everybody ain't got these. Yet it seems 50 Cent didn't have them either. Each Ferrari had little numbers on their windshields, leading to a forum post reading, if you notice the small white numbers in the top left hand corner of the windshields on the F50 and Enzo, those are the numbers of the cars that were in the Hartford Concorso Parade, which was confirmed when the user posted these photos. Another forum member added, it's pretty obvious that they aren't his, because it's a known fact that there's only one yellow Enzo in CT, which was owned by a pretty well-known hedge fund manager. Well, someone else then officially confirmed. The Ferraris are unfortunately not 50 cents. He invited my friend over to his house for this, and my friend let him use his cars for the episode, and they were filming some music videos that day as well. The Enzo F50 and 599 all belong to one owner. When 50 cent later filed for bankruptcy, he'd admit the cars were rented. He'd instead pay off debts by selling his mansion, therefore joining the likes of Jojo, who admitted to doing MTV Cribs while she was actually homeless. Jojo showed MTV oh, through yes. her Cape Cod vacation home, where she supposedly loved spending her summers. It was therefore a little weird that she'd invite her extended family, but she'd reveal the reason for this exactly 10 years later. Jojo was asked about the episode in a Huffington Post interview, to which she'd respond it was so ridiculous. The thing is, we didn't have a home at that point. My mum and I were living out of suitcases and were mostly in hotels. So that was actually my uncle's house on the Cape. That wasn't my house, that wasn't my stuff. I should have bought hard and been like, welcome to my crib, look at how luxurious it is, and I should have rented out a place. But no, I just used my uncle's crib. Jojo further clarified. So we went to the Cape, which I've like never been to the Cape. I like never go to the Cape. And we said that that was my house. Oh, that wasn't your house? No, that was not my house. We brought in some like items that I had. It's just... It's all lies. Should also answer the question. Obviously. Why even bother doing the episode then? No. For the exposure. That, oh, okay. But no episode was faker than the one by Robbie Williams. Who the fuck is that? He showed MTV his massive British castle, talking about the spots where he'd been snapped by paparazzi. He then shows his group of friends before making a joke. I don't really know these people, but what I do is I actually phone rent a friend. But apparently he'd also phoned rent a castle. You see, the building was so big that people recognized it as the famous St. Catherine's Court, which was owned by someone else completely, Jane Seymour. She had no idea that Robbie ever went there or that he'd hired a fake butler to help out with the shoot. It wouldn't be until 17 years later that Robbie finally admitted, we didn't let Jane know that I was gonna pretend it was my house. And because I was like 23 and full of spunk, I didn't even consider other people's thoughts or feelings. So I'd like to take this opportunity to apologize to Jane Seymour but it might not have even been Robbie Williams' fault. Because Redman explained in a DJ Vlad interview that MTV tried to get him to rent a house for Cribs. They wanted me to rent a house. So I could open the big double doors and shit like that. Oh, you, you, you want me to rent the house? With MTV trying to choose the home themselves. The first thing they, I, they said was, all right, we got a couple of houses picked out for you. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, Redman simply refused. And I said, you know what, no. I don't want to rent a house. I want y'all to come to my house. Accidentally making the show's most relatable episode. He brought MTV Cribs to his two bedroom apartment where he ironed his shirts on the floor and flexed his frozen fish fillets. Redman's recording studio Redman. was just hey. a messy bedroom. He was for this whilst episode, the rest of his bro. house was in such disarray, you could barely notice his cousin sleeping on the ground. He concludes the episode stating, next time y'all need to find me, just rub these two wires for the doorbell. Don't worry about the screen too. 
Are you know it's still good. The realest episode of MTV Cribs. Redman didn't fake it like other celebrities. That's hilarious. Now that red one was that red man one was crazy, man. <laughs> but I mean it was real though. It was real though. So fuck it. And plus, wait, wait, wait. They had to rent the house. And TV wasn't renting the house. Oh hell no. I hope that. Well, obviously, I'm pretty sure the celebrities are getting paid to be on the show, but. Like, nigga, I got to rent a house with my own money, nigga. You better come to this little apartment I got, bitch. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? It's awesome. <laughs> like, the show makes you think that celebrities were rich. And some of them niggas wasn't even rich. Like, Joe, Joe I'm pretty sure Joe wasn't even rich at the time. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure she was. I mean, I'm pretty sure she was making money. I'm pretty sure she. I don't think she had enough to buy a great big house, a nice house and shit. Like, you know. And Bow Wow, you know, we ain't about to talk about Bow Wow. That's my dog, bro. Anyway, make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Shout out to Sunny V2 for this video. Make sure you check out the last Sunny V2 video I ever uh, reacted, reacted to right here. And check out another video about information about celebrities right here. Um, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.